<laughs> thank you very much, uh, uh, Jerry, and thank you for the invitation to be here this, uh, this weekend to open the exhibition, and as I'm very much looking forward to take part in the, uh, in the racing uh, this afternoon. I, I do have to say that as a dog, I did have second thoughts about coming down the week before the All-Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> Cheer for cheer and shirt for shirt next Sunday in Crow Park. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. May the best teams team win. So I mean, it, I'm particularly pleased to be here because of the association this weekend with Ron Uel. And Anne Chambers, who's written the wonderful biography of uh, Grace O'Malley, I think is going to say a few words in, in a moment about Ron Uel. I think I mean, she's very well known, I think, to, to people in this part of the world, and thanks to to Anne's book, to people across the country and indeed uh, around the world who have been, through Anne's writing, introduced to this quite extraordinary woman. Uh, all those years ago in the 1500s, uh, she was a chieftain here in the, uh, in the west of Ireland. Uh, she negotiated towards the end of her life with, with Queen Elizabeth uh, in London. She married uh, twice and she might have had other dalliances uh, along the way. A really extraordinary woman uh, at a time when, when women weren't expected to have any real role, were they, in society? Now, we've come a long way, maybe with more still to come, but I think for that reason, first of all, it's tremendous that she's been celebrated here this afternoon, because I'm a father of daughters, uh, and I certainly, as a father of daughters, uh, I'm sure many of you have daughters as well, want to see them fulfilling their full potential, isn't that right? And having all the opportunities uh, that traditionally men have had over the years. So this extraordinary woman, this, uh, this uh, personification, if you like, uh, of the, the role and the capacity of women to play a full role uh, in society all those uh, hundreds of years ago here in Achill and uh, here in West Mayo. So it's tremendous to be able to come together uh, and to celebrate that. And the other reason I'm so pleased to be here is because we're going to be on the water, we're going to be sailing, we're going to be celebrating Ireland's tradition of the sea and maritime tradition. And the extraordinary thing about Ireland is although we're surrounded by water, very often we've turned our backs on the sea, haven't we? For a whole variety of reasons that I'm not entirely sure apply. Grand Uel, of course, was first and foremost a woman of the sea. She's described as a pirate, but what she was, was she was a maritime chieftain, wasn't she, uh, Anne? And uh, she did her business on, on the great waters, to quote the sound, uh, and was very successful at that. She was, uh, in, in, I suppose, modern parlance, she was a, a tax collector. And she went out on the water to collect the, to collect the taxes, and uh, she slipped them into her own back pocket. And, uh, rather than handing them on uh, to any other uh, higher authority. And so she saw the sea not as something to be afraid of and to, 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 be, uh, uh, to be intimidated by, but as an element in which she could operate, in which she could, uh, she could have a, a livelihood, in which she could exercise her power and her authority, uh, and in which she could thrive. And she's one of the very few figures, I suppose, in Irish history that uh, has seen the sea in that way. And very often the sea is seen in this country as something which is the exclusive preserve of those who went to the right schools and have the right kind of uh, background and the right social connections and have the right type of yachts and the right blazer and are members of the right kind of clubs. What Ron Uel tells us and what this weekend tells us is that that's not at all the case. The sea should be something that's available to all of us. And here in Ackill and with the Ackill Yall tradition, I think you, uh, you uh, very vividly uh, remind us of that and say to people, I think beyond here, well beyond here, that the sea is an environment which can be enjoyed and celebrated uh, by all of us, and I hope that that's a, a little stone that we've dropped, you drop in the, in the pond as it were, and it sends out those, uh, those uh, ripples. Um, I think this is a wonderful exhibition, I'm very honoured to be asked to, to open it. Uh, the fantastic models which we have around here really are um, a superb insight into the, into the boat builder's craft. Um, I, I visited Marty in his workshop some years ago, and we, I think we filmed you uh, at work, uh, Marty, at that time. I think you were building, building the yawl that was destined eventually for the United States, for Boston. Uh, and what a wonderful project that was. And I was astonished because I went into Marty's workshop and I looked around and said, where are the drawings? You know, where are the, the blueprints? Where, where's the computer with the sort of three-dimensional models and all the rest of it? No, it's all, it's all in Marty's head, isn't it? It's because he comes from that tradition of, uh, of boat building. He doesn't need drawings. He doesn't need to lay out lines on the floor or on a loft. Uh, because the skill and the knowledge uh, and the designs are in his head. He's, he's a, a walking, uh, living computer, I suppose, in that sense, uh, uh, Marty. So it's wonderful to see that uh, uh, captured uh, 
here in, in these uh, tremendous models that have been built by, uh, by Marty and the others who, uh, who were mentioned um, a little earlier. It's terrific to see the children's art uh, exhibition here. Uh, I think Jerry likes the one of the Mayo Man and the Yellow Rose because the Mayo Man is storming along and the Yellow Rose is sinking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a normal, that's a normal occurrence. Uh, where's Mikey there? Uh, <laughs>